Hi everyone. Okay, so here we are with the final critique and I must apologize for the delay in getting this on YouTube for you. Um, this weekend's been kind of a family, little family emergency. So um, yeah, so the house has been filled with um, lots of lots of folks and lots of conversation. But with that being said, um, okay, so calmer place, better time for me to do a critique. I almost feel like I don't need to do a demo critique for you because everyone did so well. All of your lessons are just awesome. I feel that any one of you could just get right out there and start um, painting and, uh, and signing and selling. It's up to you if that's the goal that you want. Um, I know with some of the students I talked about their own personal goals and um, I'm a big I'm a big believer in setting goals in order to achieve those steps you you want to uh, achieve and and if it's being a full-time artist or if it's being uh, a part-time artist or if it's just being able to paint find time to paint in your busy day those goals can be set you know according to what it is you'd like to see have happen within your painting career Okay, so, and if you ever need any advice on that, I'm here for you. You can give me a, uh, shoot me an email and I'd be happy to give you some sort of guidance the best that I know how. Um, but I think I, I think I'm pretty good at uh, knowing what direction you may be wanting to go in. Um, and I'd love to help you out. Okay, so now we're going to start with our critique. And I'm turning the camera right onto my board here. Okay, now. When I, when I um, critiqued all of your paintings, I was trying to find a common theme that everyone seemed to be uh, needing to have uh, a suggestion that I, I threw in there. And I found the biggest suggestion that I needed to tell you all about was um, in this area under here, glazing this area under here. Now, a lot of you have... Um, a lot of you have um, actually done this, or I've critiqued it, and I've actually taken it and um, and you taken the suggestion. Now here we go, right here, here, and here. Okay, boom, 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 boom. Okay, and you can see just with that little bit how much impact that has on the bottom of the orange, right? Does it have to be all the way across? No, you can pick and choose some areas where you can glaze. It doesn't have to be everything. It just depends on, on, on you know how much, how many shapes you have developed down here. You know, maybe it just needs a little bit more development with your values. Okay, and while it's wet, you know, you can still drop a little bit more. And if you want to get a bigger impact on on certain areas, it doesn't have to be all the way across. Okay, and I'm, I really do believe that um, I like the teal blue more so than the warm, the warm greens that we're finding in this um, particular photo. Back, you know, things change over the years. So when I did paint this for the book, it was, you know, it had those warm tones to it. And, and, but now that I've painted as many times as I've painted this over and over, I, I tend to like that teal blue, you know, give it more of a cool, cool, because there's so much warmth up in here. Um, and is it too late to change that? No, you can do that right now with, um, you know, you can leave some of the warm tones, but you can actually cool some of the tones down right there, you know, and just take a, a it's a phthalo blue that I'm using, and it's watered down, and you can add that all the way across if you like. Um, pick and choose. You can stop and start. If uh, it just all depends on where you are, and I'm going to go over this um, with each critique. Okay. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit more blue in. Drop it in right over the green. Right over the green. Yeah. See, and that does. See how that cools that down a little bit compared to what it, where it was with this warmer warm green up in here too. That. Well, that doesn't look like it's showing up on the camera very well. Um, here we go, right in here. Let's go 
you know, some some uh, a blue, but, uh, this is a blue glaze again, right over it. Okay, now, now that we've completed that, we're going to start with Barber's Critique, and um, I hope you all printed these out if you're going to be following along, okay? Barber's Critique is, let's see, we have, I'm looking, I have it right in front of me and I'm trying to look at it on the little monitor there. Um, Barber's Critique. Okay, so for her, I, that's the suggestion that I made. Because this is, the, see how all the warm tones, and I know that orange does pick up in this green base, but you can also find little areas um, where you can throw in some blue. Because I think it just, for me, it just seemed like it got a little too, too warm. Okay, so I, I showed Barbara how you could um, actually put the blue glaze here. And she has a little bit of warm glaze um, in here. And that's not such a bad thing. Right here, she has, uh, let's see. I'm going to bring it closer to the camera so you can see it. Okay, see this right here? There's there's a blue, there's an orange tone. And that's not so bad to leave that there. Um, back here, I like what she did here. A hard edge and then a soft edge. Hard edge, soft edge. Um, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking that maybe she needs a little bit more of a something right in here. Okay, and then boom. And maybe, you know, just a couple more, a couple more um, glazes, just so it's not two-dimensional, you know, you're going to give it a little bit more body. And see what happens here. This seems to be one of the um, common problems that I saw, not common, but I mean, you, you only can, you only can take this so far with the, with the instructions that you get. So this is just a little bit more of a hint. Um, cause I don't, I don't believe this was part of the instructions of the, uh, step by step. Um, if, if this has this much transparency through it, this should have some transparency. It's not that thick of a glass. So you can actually come in, drop in some more color down here, right? And all we're doing is pretending like there's more transparency in this portion of the glass and adding a few more values within each little um, rectangular shape here, okay? That is where you bring in your creative license and you just, it just makes a little bit more sense. It should have some more, you know, a little bit more movement in this glass. You know, working from a photograph and not actually seeing the actual object with light hitting it and such, um, sometimes the photograph is only going to pick up, of course, you know, your focus, this was the main focus of this lesson. And, you know, it might drop out. Some of those shapes might drop out in, in the photograph. You know, maybe, who's, who's to say, I probably didn't take the best of the best photographs. But, um, however, yeah. So, so what I encourage my students to do is just kind of let the, your painting be your guide. You know, um, Add, add, add. Because, see that? Just that little bit right there? It shows that there's transparency now. Versus over here, no transparency. Okay? So that brings me to um, another tip that I gave. Um, I believe it was Jan. Okay, on Jan's critique. I love Jan's um, critique. I love all your work, by the way. Um, but Jan's critique, I noticed she, she brought her painting to a certain level and then she asked for, um, suggestions and then I gave her a few suggestions and then, and then, or she, she looked at the detailed demo and then took it a little bit further. Um, her style is very soft and, and it's just luscious, just luscious the way she puts color down and I think what happens what made me think about this was was it this particular uh, critique she um, and I, I believe this is like something that most of my students have problems with and that is I'm going to turn the camera because I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes um, and that is as watercolors we're told don't overwork, 
oh, don't overwork, you're going to make mud, don't overwork, you're going to, you know, so on and so forth. And, and that has been drummed in my head. That has been drummed in my student's head. That has been drummed in, you know, it's one of those fears that we maybe carry with us or the warning of, of overworking. With this subject, especially, and I, I, I have been known to overwork paintings, but it's, it's me trying to find how far I can go. Okay. And I think it's okay to keep pushing, pushing, pushing those details. I think that's why you're drawn to this type of lesson is because of the details. So when you're at this point of your painting, and you're at this point of your painting. Let's go, I'm gonna to flip to the next board and let's talk about this. Um, is this painting finished? I, you know, it could be finished for most. It could be finished, but I really truly think it's, you know, there's so much more I could do. And the nice thing is, is that overworking, you're not gonna overwork it. You've got all your shapes in place. Now we're talking, all we're talking about is glazing a few more areas and maybe dropping in a few more hard edged dark values, maybe, but there's no way you can overwork this. You're gonna gently approach it, but don't, what I want you to think about is don't put this away saying, okay, it's done. A lot, I've heard my students say, okay, back here again, sorry. <laughs> I've heard my students say, oh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm finished. I don't want to overwork it. This is it. I, don't let me overwork, overwork uh, my painting. So I'm afraid, I'm afraid. In backgrounds, people are afraid. But you're not going to overwork it. Okay, back to, back to the um, painting. Um, again, you know, I think, you know, we could actually, you know, bring in, okay, that, that whole glaze, a lot more of that glaze. But we could talk about this, the front portion of this. You know, maybe, maybe you're afraid of too much busyness going on. Well, that's, that's fine too. I mean, I, I, I respect that um, because I know I've done that too. But sometimes what happens is if it gets too busy, then, you know, then, it's, then all you have to do is glaze over it and, um, you know, just, just to settle it down. However, I know when I look at glass, there are so many different shapes and there's so many different values. There's so many different colors. You, it's, you've got to honor that as, as the subject is being painted. Down here, when I look at it in the monitor, I see one, two, one, two, maybe three, you know, but in reality, there, if you really look at it in, in real life, there's more. But that doesn't do me any good as far as if it's hanging in the gallery. You want you want it just to like wow the people. And I really do think that that this, when you take it the next to the next level, this is it, you know, right here. You just keep moving and adding and adding in different areas. Wherever you feel that it's lacking. Let's say you look at your painting and you go, but she didn't talk about that in the lesson. So you, you maybe you steer away from it, but don't, you know, take your style, take your knowledge and add it to your painting. It's okay. You know, you guys have got it. So, you know, I'm taking the training wheels off. You just go for it. Just go for it. Cause you know, what's best. You really do. I know, you know, um, because sometimes what's going to happen, I know I, I had this same, um, this same thing happen to me when I was taking workshops and I'd come home with this whole new philosophy of how to paint. However, um, and, and, and that instructor's words would be, you know, in my head, but, um, I want you to remember who you are as an artist and don't let those, some words influence you, but if something rings true, use it. If it doesn't ring true for you, then, you know, put it aside. Maybe it'll come, there'll be, maybe there'll be a time where you can recall that suggestion or technique and then it might apply to another painting. Um, it's funny how that happens because 
you you look you learn it you're going to learn these techniques when you're ready to learn it and and you you can learn the techniques and put them aside and funny thing is is that you'll have a recall of that technique and you'll go oh that's how i can apply it um that happens quite often i've I've had recall of techniques or, or, or suggestions from instructors, you know, up to 10, 10 years, you know, 15 years later, and I go, oh, that's what they meant. So it's there when you need it, okay? Okay, so I think I'm going to do a two-parter because um, the next one's going to be, um, we're going to talk about the shadow and, and a few other um, critiques that I mentioned. And... Um, and I think it's best if I do it two parters because I can only put so much time on YouTube. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it for now and then start again.